And right now it's time for that time when we have our special guest. Tonight's special guest is BBC researcher and documentary maker Caroline Mackesee. Along with her husband Ian, Caroline spent thousands of hours researching the life and times of Jean Batten for the fascinating book The Garbo of the Skies. The story of Jean Batten, New Zealand's own aviation hero. We welcome Caroline Mackesee as our special guest on The Beat Goes On. Caroline Mackesee, welcome to the program. Thank you, Gerard, and thank yeah. you for having me. Fascinating story that you have to tell. We had a wonderful uh, little bit of Kiwiana dream time with Rose, and she spoke about Jean Batten. And uh, I thought it was a fascinating story, so I thought I'd look more into it. And the more I looked into it, of course you Google, and then we found this wonderful book called Jean Batten, The Garbo of the Sky. What a mysterious woman she was, wasn't she? She was indeed. And you were the researcher for this book, weren't you? Yes. So you know everything about <laughs> Jean Batten. Well, not everything. <laughs> everything that was discoverable, I hope. <laughs> oh, there's more secrets to cover here. So what we have to find out, first of all, for our, our viewers, is who was Jean Batten and what made her famous? Well, Jean was perhaps New Zealand's most famous personality of the pre-war era. She was a, an aviation megastar. So she was the Tiger Woods oh, of, of her day. Of, of her day. Uh, her name, just Jean, in a newspaper, an English, and even Spanish and French newspapers, Jean, everybody knew who Jean was. She was up with Amy Johnson and mm. Amelia Earhart, and in fact, she was a better pilot and certainly a better navigator, and she was the first woman aviator to break men's records. So wow. she was really a super superstar. Let's get the period. It's 19, around between 1934 to about 1937. It all happened for y her. Didn't yes, it? it was about four years, four or five years of fame. And how old was she during this period? Well, she was born in 1909. Mm. So. So her first flight, she would have been in her early 20s, in now, 1933. How did she even get into it? She was born in 1909, just after Blériot had flown the channel for the first time. And her mother, mm. uh, who was a very powerful woman, uh, apparently put up a little picture of Blériot flying the channel over Jean's mm. cot. And throughout childhood, I think, fostered that belief in aviation. Jean was really living out her mother's dreams, mm. although they became her dreams as well. Yeah. I mean, that was a symbiosis between mother so and daughter. What do we know about the mother? Well, the mother was an extremely strong personality. Uh, she, uh, I've lots of descriptions of yeah. her as a Svengali, Machiavellian. These are some of the words yeah. that people who knew her talked about. One a uh, young woman who met them when they went overseas for Jean to learn to fly on the boat said she had a coruscating personality, very frightening, tall, mm -hmm. beautiful, dominating, and totally controlling of Jean. She, uh, Jean. she said Jean was almost like a prisoner of her mother. She did exactly what her mother asked her to do. So at the time, just to finish that, who Jean Batten was, um, Jean could go to anywhere in the world around about 1937 at the end of it and she was as you said she was absolutely at, at the Tiger Woods status yes, yes yes and she was a New Zealander and she was a New Zealander so us New Zealanders of course in 19 we must have thought wow this is great to have an international star we did but I think New Zealand's always been ambivalent about her because she wasn't a typical New Zealander yeah. uh, she wasn't she didn't give other people credit for the help that they gave her she was an extremely self-centred, selfish, obsessed. When you were involved with the writing of this book, your husband actually wrote the book, but you did all the research. The Garbo of the Skies, why did they come up with that title? Uh, she had this dual personality, really. She wanted the fame, she wanted the acclaim, but then when she got it, she tended to run away from it and wanted mm. to, uh, and disappeared. She lived a very private, mysterious life with her mother. Mm. Um, and very little was known about her and she carefully crafted a public image that was actually quite at variance with reality. So um, what was the image that she tried to give? That well, that she and mother had done it alone against the world. She didn't really give credit for this, her success to a number of people. Yeah. First of all, there was another New Zealander called Fred Truman who funded her flying, who hoped to marry her, but when Fred 
he spent his whole gratuity, 500 pounds, he was an RAF pilot, 500 pounds on mm. uh, um, her flying training. She moved on when he ran out of money. And she had relationships with these men who funded? She, well, whether she actually had a physical relationship is, is not known. His family believes so. 500 um, pounds was a lot of money. It was a lot he of money. gave that to yeah. Jean yeah. to get her going, thinking that he would be her uh, husband. Yes, he, he hoped to marry her. And then when the money ran out, she would find another... She <laughs> moved on to another guy called yeah. Victor Doré, who was a prosperous son of a prosperous um, linen merchant. Mm. And he, his mother lent him the money to buy her a plane. And again, yeah. Victor thought... Expected, he was going to get married to... Victor expected mm. to marry her. Unfortunately, the, her, that plane mm. crashed. And when she came back and wanted him to either repair it or buy her mm. another one, by that time his family had lost their money. Gosh. And so she broke off the relationship and went to um, and found another guy yeah. uh, who was a stockbroker. Yeah. Uh, by this time, Lord Wakefield had got involved. He was Castro Loyal, and he um, funded her partly for the flight that was her first flight that was successful, which was in 1934 when she flew to Australia. Now, what would Jean say? Say she suddenly appeared between the two of us. What would her, if she heard that we inferred that she may have used men to uh, gain this money, what, what do you think Jean would say in her defence on this? Um, I think she would be extremely angry. <laughs> first of all, Sorry, she, kept, she kept these things very, very concealed. I mean, I think that if you think that she came from uh, a background where there was very little money, it was in the middle of the Depression, mm -hmm. she had this obsession, she had this drive and desire, and I think she would have thought it justified that they should have been honoured to have yeah. lent her the money, the money as yes. she would have put it. Yes, exactly. Um, not that she ever repaid them, or she repaid sometimes, she repaid in part, but never in full.